वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू दिस वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन सो व्हाट इज द लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एसेंशियली व्हाट वी आर डूइंग इज वी आर स्टार्टिंग आउट विथ टू वेक्टर स्पेसेस ओके सो लेट एक्स एंड वाई टू वेक्टर स्पेसेस वाई आर टू वेक्टर स्पेसेस टू वेक्टर स्पेस एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिफाइन अ मैप एंड डिफाइन अ मैप ओके एंड लेट्स जस्ट कॉल इट अ मैप ए ओके ए from x to y so this is called a linear map this is called a linear map if l of a sorry a of x1 plus x2 equals to a times x1 plus a times x2 right so this uh, should hold for all x1 and x2 in x of course and also we won't need this a Times c of x is nothing but c times a of x. Okay. Again, this should hold for all x in capital X and c is in R. Whatever the field you are choosing. So for us, this is R. Clear? So you see, we often write. So essentially, what happens is, see, see, we in this course we are always going to write a x. Okay. So in this is essentially nothing but a acting at the element x. Okay. So this is a small notation. Notation. Let me just put it this way. Okay. We are going to write as a x. Okay. Of course, you can see that if um, x and x one and x two is zero, what we have is um, a of x. So let's say note. That if x one and x two is zero, okay, then you can see that a times zero equals to two times a acting at zero. So which will give you a zero equals to a zero equals to zero, right? And this zero is the zero element of x, okay? So this zero is a zero element of sorry, sorry, a is from x to y. So this sorry, this is zero element of x. This is zero element of y. Okay, now so once that is clear, you see what happens is basically why we are interested in linear transformation because um, we are uh, going to work with a lot of uh, matrices. Okay, and uh, in, in this case, what is happening is this: a linear transformation is basically nothing but matrices. Okay, so how do you put it? You see what happens is a linear transformation. So let me put it as a remark. Let's say remark that at a linear transformation. a linear transformation transformation a from x to y okay is is completely determined so you can actually exactly know what it does okay by completely determined determined by its action on the basis by its action on any basis right any basis so what do i mean by this what i mean is let's say that you start with a basis let's say x1 xn be the basis of a be the basis of x okay Huh? Then you see any x in x can be written as x is nothing but sum i equals to one to n. Let's say it is n dimensional, so c i x i. Okay, we can write it like this, right? And and if we look at the action of a, a times x, okay, what it will be is a times summation c i x i i equals to one to n. and since this is linear because from the second property uh, combining the first and the second property we know that you can actually write it as summation i equals to 1 to n ci a of xi right we can write it like this so you see what is happening is this uh, that uh, the linearity of a will allow us to compute a of x okay from the vectors ax1 x2 xn okay so this is what we are we want to say that it is completely determined by the action of its basis okay and you see uh, another small remark a b let me put it this way small remark b that uh, the linear transformations linear transformations from x to x let's say ha huh? transformations from x to x transformations 
from from x to x x to x we will call that are called are called linear operators on x okay are called linear operators operators on x i think i hope this is clear operators on x this is just a name nothing special okay so you see uh, what is happening is this okay so now what is happening is this so basically we want to find out some properties okay what are the uh, what are the properties that can be satisfied by a linear operator so uh, let's look at a small theorem so let's say that a linear operator let's say you are given a linear operator on a finite dimension and vector space x right so a linear operator a linear operator let's say and let's just call it a l now huh? of um, operator l operator you remember it is from x to x okay a linear operator let's say l more defined from x to x okay is 1 1 so can, when can we say it is 1 1 this is a if and only if condition if and only if the range of a okay if the range of a of a is x so basically it is all of x okay so if the range is all of x then basically you have that the um, linear operator a is 1 1 right so what is the proof of this let's look at the proof of this thing Huh? very simple proof but let's look at the proof so let's say we start with a um, basis right of x x n be the basis of x be the basis of x basis of x okay now the linearity since a is linear right okay what does it mean it means that the range of a hmm? the, the range of a let's just write it like this this is the range of a range of a okay how do you how can you write the range of a so this is nothing but the span of this element right you see this can be written as the span of ax1 axn right the span of this this is called the span huh? this or we write it as the span of these vectors ax1 axn okay you remember because you see from the last slide you can see that any ax can be written like this right so basically uh, what happens is if you start with the element of range of a which is ax then you can write it as a linear combination of a x size right so you can write it like this huh? now you see that uh, when is you can easily see that r of a okay is x x if and only what is the condition if and only if a of x1 a of x2 a of xn this this set okay this is independent if and only if the set so let's say let's write it as ax1 axn this is independent independent clear yeah? This you can easily see that R of A has to be X if and only if and only if Q is independent. Okay, so basically um, uh, we have to show that A is one one. Okay, so basically, oh, sorry sorry, I am writing A here. So let's write it as A, huh? uh, because I, I started our linear operator as A, right? So we should write it as A. Okay, so uh, we do we should do it with like this. Okay, so range of A is X if and only if this is independent, right? Okay, so we have to show okay that this can happen if and only if a is one one. So how do you show that? So suppose now let's say suppose a is one to one. Okay, if that is the case, uh, and let's say that summation c i a x i is zero. Okay, i equals to one to n. so basically it is independent I, I am assuming this thing okay then what is happening is that Im will imply a of summation c i x i is going to be zero right uh, because of the linearity and then one can write down summation of c i x i has to be equals to zero right and then since uh, a uh, so a is one one right so basically uh, you see if summation so this is one to n if summation c i x i is equals to 0 that will actually imply that c 1 has to be equal to c 2 that should be equal to 0 right why because since a is 1 1 and a of 0 is equal to 0 so it will give you that summation c i x i has to be 0 okay 
and then uh, you always have that uh, ci is a zero because x1 x2 extends are the basis of x okay so that is there so that will actually imply that if ci is a zero so summation ci axi is zero and ci is a zero that will imply that the set ax1 axn this set is is linearly independent right is linearly independent linearly independent okay now the thing is uh, let's look at the converse okay so what happens if the set is linearly independent and a of summation ci x i is zero okay so let's look at the converse now converse so let's say that uh, the set a of x1 a of x1 a of x in this set okay let's say this set is uh, independent linearly independent that is linearly independent linearly independent pendant okay and and a of summation c i x i is 0 i am not writing i equals to 1 to n that is implied there okay so that will actually imply that summation c i a x i is 0 huh? it's very easy of course because of the linearity we can write it and that will imply that c i is will be 0 for all i right i equals to 1 to n this is true because a of x1 x2 xn i have assumed that this is going to be linearly independent right so this is true so this will imply that a of x equals to 0 only if only if x equals to 0 okay so you see now let's say that if a of x equals to a of y okay so if now a x equals to a y okay that will imply a of x minus y is going to be 0 linearity and that will imply x has to be equals to y okay and that will imply that a is 1 1 a is 1 1 so basically you see you started with the linearly independent set you showed it is 1 1 and the uh, converse also so we can actually say that uh, the uh, linear operator a is and only the range of a is going to be whole of x okay now we need some definitions huh? let's let's do some definitions here definitions so uh, the first definition which you are going to do is this you see uh, we are going to write down l of x y huh? this is the notation which we are going to use l of x y this is the set of all linear transformations set of all linear transformations linear transformations transformations or linear maps whatever you want to call it linear transformations from x to y huh? and give from x to y and of course we are assuming x and y are vector spaces x to y clear yeah? and uh, you see uh, if there is a linear map uh, operator on uh, x it means that we just write l of x y uh, so um, and l of x x so basically a linear operator on x we just write it as l of x clear yeah? okay so this this is just a notation which you are going to use right okay now um, the thing is this um, what we are going to do is we are going to define a very important no notion so we are going to define the norm right so let's say for a linear uh, map a from rn to rn rn to rn clear what happens is we define define the norm the norm a of a of a okay and how do we define it we define it to be the super of oh, sorry uh, we define the norm as norm of a supremum of this set ax okay so basically we are looking at where a is acting so basically we are choosing a from uh, this unit ball huh? less than equal one okay and we are looking at how a is acting on that uh, every element of that ball okay and we take the supremum of such a set 
okay right so how do you know such a supremum exists you see a is a linear map from rn to rn we know the linear map so um, uh, we know that linear maps are going to be continuous on finite dimensional spaces right okay and since it is a continuous function and this set this set is a compact set we know that the maximum or supremum whatever you call it in this case uh, maximum but uh, let's just stick with supremum here but the supremum exists okay and that we are going to call it as a norm of a okay right and we can also observe okay observe this observe that mod of x huh? okay sorry one thing huh? i have to put a mod here otherwise the norm won't be defined okay so it is the supremum of mod x okay so you have to observe the mod of a x so a of x okay uh, sorry this mod, mod what am i saying this is not mod uh, a of x is in rm right so this is m and this okay so this is r n so the uh, norm in r n huh? this is what we are defined and this is the norm in r n okay let me put it this way now a x is a norm in r n okay and this is always dominated by norm of a what is this norm this norm is defined on l r n r n okay and times the n norm of x okay because this is the supremum right you see we are looking at supremum of a x that is we are defining as the norm of a so basically uh, norm of a x can always be dominated by norm of a times norm of x okay right i hope uh, you can see why this is true okay so please check this part check this part huh? just uh, keep this in mind that any element y okay let's say you are starting with any element in y in rn then y by norm of y okay in norm rn norm that is always one okay now you can uh, use this fact to prove something like this so this is very easy to show so please do that okay right so now there are two theorems which i need to know proof theorems so the first theorem is this if a um, linear transformation from Rn to Rm, A is a linear transformation from Rn to Rm, okay, then the norm of A is finite, is finite, okay, and and A is uniformly continuous, okay, uniformly continuous, continuous. The continuity part is very easy okay that you can of course prove but it's not only continuous it is more than that it is uniformly continuous now b okay so this is a small uh, another uh, let me put a small note here check that if which is a linear map from rn to rm is continuous So maybe you can of course uh, there is nothing special to check because we are going to do it here itself but uh, uh, so basically uh, it is not only continuous this is uniformly continuous okay. okay so and of course what we have is this so if let's say if a and b we are choosing two elements from l r n to r n r n to r n okay so two linearly uh, sorry uh, linear transformation from r n to r n and you are choosing a c from a uh, scalar which is r in the, our case then you can actually show that norm of a plus b so it satisfies the triangle inequality less than norm of a plus norm of b okay and and mod of c times a okay is equals to mod c norm a yeah okay so this is there huh? and uh, of course uh, what another uh, important criteria which we need to do is this let's say if a is a linear map from rn to rn and b is a linear map from rn to rn uh, rm to rk let's say yes rk okay then we can actually define of course ba right and we can define the norm of ba hmm? then ba will be dominated by norm of b times norm of a okay these properties are very important we are going to use these properties uh, when we define something called a matrix exponential so you should know these thing uh, things for a fact okay so let's look at the proof of this proof 
so the first thing is this you have to show that the norm of a is finite and a is uniformly continuous right that is what we need to show okay so what we are going to do is we are going to start with the standard basis of rn so e1 e2 en let's say be the standard basis of rn be the standard basis of rn standard basis of rn okay basis of rn and and let's start with an element x so we can write it as summation x i e i okay i equals to 1 to n right so once we do that and we also choose this x in such a way that norm x is less than equal 1 huh? this norm is in of course in rn huh? so the norm rn norm now you see why we are choosing it because you see we have to show that norm of a is finite right and how is norm of a chosen you see we are not looking at the whole of rn but only uh, in the unit ball which is less than equal one norm x is less than equal one so i'm choosing my x accordingly clear once we do that this will actually imply so you see this will actually imply that the modulus of each uh, xi okay sorry each x size they are less than equal one okay this of course you can uh, see right this is very easy to see for i equals to one to n clear okay so once that is true then uh, one can write down you see a of x how does a of x looks like it looks like summation ci a of ei right that is how it looks like linearity one to n and then this can always be dominated by summation mod ci mod a of ei okay how am i writing it i am using this property you see observe that ax is less than equal norm x times norm of a times mod of x okay so i am using this property here okay and of course with the triangle inequality so this is i equals to sorry this is i equals to 1 to a okay now um, okay now uh, what am I? Uh, so a of x is this, which is the, which is dominated by mod c i times not a. Clear. So this is true. Now what? You, how can we do it? Okay. So this. Okay. So this is again dominated by summation mod a e i. Right? Why? Because you see all this sorry i am writing ci is here this is why i couldn't find out what is happening so xi times ei xi times ei okay so since each xi is less than equal one so we have this is less than equal uh this is less than equal uh, a of ei okay uh, one thing i made a mistake here so basically this is this is just a scalar times um, this vector right so we are we are using this triangle triangle inequality here okay right so we are not using this this fact huh? we are not using this fact but we are just using the triangle inequality huh? sorry for the mistake right now so once you have this then you see what we have is uh, therefore norm of a which is nothing but the supremum of this for mod x uh, sorry norm x less than one okay is always dominated by summation i cos to one to n uh, mod of a ei uh, sorry norm of a ei okay which is dominated by uh, which is finite clear so this that is clear because this is just uh, um, n uh, numbers which is basically uh, the sum of n numbers which is going to be finite so norm of a is always going to be finite okay and you see and and a of x okay minus a of y if you do so basically i have to show uniform continuity right for that a of x minus a of y you can actually write it as norm of a times mod of x minus sorry norm of x minus y okay this is where uh, this inequality i'm using so mod of ax is less than equal norm of a norm of x okay so this is what we are using here so this is true if for all x y in rn right for all x y in rn so if this is true then you see we can of course see that since this is true a is uniformly a is uniformly continuous uniformly continuous clear okay now uh, what about the second pro property what is it norm of the 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 norm of a plus b is dominated by norm of a plus norm of b okay 
so the second property phi sorry p okay so first of all i am starting out with the norm of b so the any element of a plus b so a plus b times x huh? i want to see what is the action of a plus b on a uh, arbitrary element x okay so this is nothing but ax plus bx ax plus bx yes and by triangle inequality i can write it as ax plus bx i hope what I, I am doing is clear to you i am using triangle inequality here okay see a and b is from rn to rn so ax plus bx this is in rn you see this vector is in rn clear since this vector is in rn i can use the triangle inequality in rn clear that is what i am doing okay so if this is true then you see this is again dominated by you can see this this um, inequality that um, norm of ax is dominated by uh, norm of a times norm of x right so this is dominated by norm of a plus norm of b times norm of x clear okay once this is true of course you can take the supremum now and you can see that uh, the result follows clear okay so taking supremum the result follows supremum the result the result follows follows okay and the second part is uh, i want to so ch please check check that uh, this this property that's a uh, mod ca uh, uh, sorry norm ca is equals to mod c norm a okay so ca equals to uh, mod c norm a huh? i want to you to check this part okay so please check this part this is accordingly done in the same exact same way so if you want to look at norm of ca you start with ca acting at an element a and then you do accordingly you use triangle integrity or whatever appropriate inequality is that you can actually get it okay now let's look at the third property what do you have c the third property third property is this that um, norm of b a is dominated by norm of b times norm of a okay so again we want to look at what b a does to an arbitrary element x okay the norm of that so this is nothing but uh, b acting at x right that's the definition and this is i, I we can write it like this right a x you see a x is an element here a x is an element of rm rm b acting at the element of rm from r k right okay so you see this is the element of rm okay and the whole element is in rk so this is the the norm in k okay so the norm in k okay so now we can use this inequality again uh, norm of ax is domi dominated by norm of a times norm of x okay so this is dominated by norm of b times norm of ax clear and that is dominated by uh, norm of b and more um, norm of ax is again dominated by norm of a times norm of x okay let let us write it down like this okay see the thing is once that is done and now you can take the supremum now taking supremums you can find out the result taking supremum so we have one has one has that the norm of ba is dominated by norm of b times norm of a clear so this is true okay now uh, so this is this is more or less uh, what we need to know on the linear transformations okay with this i am going to end this particular video